So before I start this video, I just want to start off by saying the intro animation you saw, that took me like like a solid month to make. It's 20 seconds and it took me a very, very, very long time. Secondly, if you're wondering why there's just a whole bunch of seemingly random characters, anytime I start an animation, I post a notification in the Discord. So if any of you watching this want to see a random character of your choice, it could be an original character you made, or, I don't know, like, um, what was one of the ones used here? If you want to see Mario dressed up as Chris Pratt, or sorry, Chris Pratt dressed up as Mario, yeah, just uh, ask me whenever I post that notification in the Discord server, which you can join in the link in the description. Anyway, uh, subscribe, I guess, and also enjoy the rest of the video. Uh, it's another one of these Superman adjacent movies. I won't. Hopefully this video isn't too long. The year is 1984, a year of dread, torment, and sadness, according to George Orwell. Though personally, I just think he predicted this movie coming out. Because, despite that, 1984 was kind of a pretty decent year. So yeah, Supergirl, 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 Supergirl. What what even was this movie, man? It's... Oh, I watched it well, a significantly long time ago, and luckily I've been able to retain enough information to make a full review on it. But, ooh, it took up like 30% of my constant brain power to just keep this movie in my head, because one one ounce of concentration less and it's right out of there. But anyway, let's just get right into what this movie is about. Supergirl exists on a planet that's not Krypton, she's just hanging out there, until she accidentally rips a hole through the literal plastic wrap that defends their city, and then she leaves successfully pinning the blame on some defenseless old man. But then she moves onto Earth, and enters the planet by bursting through the water? This is never explained and just exists in the movie and I don't know why. She flies around for a bit and decides to enroll in school for literally no reason. Other than that's just what good children do. Yep. Now moving on, it's the villain time, because some evil woman encountered a MacGuffin that fell or resurfaced from the water from the plastic wrap planet, and she hotwires a car with the orb and rides away. And meanwhile, the radio in the car explains that Superman is off in some land and will not return to Earth. A win-win, as Christopher Reeve doesn't have to be in this horrible movie, and the studio doesn't have to pay him. Oh. And now we're back with Supergirl, who's at school and meets Lois Lane's sister, Lucy Lane. It's really all that happens in this scene. So, with that full, like, half hour of the movie out of the way, where pretty much nothing happens for a full half an hour, we're put up with the villains. The villains in this movie are actually pretty fun. They are some woman that I don't remember the name, I'll probably remember it later, and her sidekick. And also a guy. Um, this guy is very important, or I just left him out because I, I didn't really I didn't really care about him. But anyway, these villains are actually kind of fun. They really tend to ham it up all the time, which allows me to watch the movie and, you know, not just fall asleep to a boring performance. They aren't any good. And the movie still sucks, but I'm a lot, I'm able to see enough enough irony in their performance, if it's supposed to be there or not, to where I can actually take some enjoyment out of it. So that's a light in the dark. Anyway, back to this nonsense. So Supergirl is at school, and is best friends with Lucy Lane. And there we meet the Himbo Groundskeeper 
who is spotted by the villains for his hulky, sexy bod. There is a real reason for them to be at the school, but the movie is fading away from memory so fast that I have completely forgotten. Anyway, the villains decide that the himbo has to be theirs and they want him, so they promptly kidnap him. There's their motivation for this evil plot. Lust. So the villains, Selena, Selena, that's her name, and her friend Bianca, I think, they go home and make a love potion using the powers that the orb gives her. These powers can range from love potions to dragons or demons or spinning a carousel really fast. They use the love potion on the himbo and he's all potioned up, stumbling his way around and is able to escape the fortress and find himself in the middle of the road. There, in said street, is Supergirl and Lucy talking with Lucy's new friend, Lucy's friend, J J J Jimmy Olsen? He's here? He's, he's in the movie? He's in this one? Really? My boy Jimmy Olsen shows up in it. Well, that's just great. You know what that mean, guys? It's... It's time for the Jimmy Olsen Minute. Welcome back to the Jimmy Olsen Minute. If you haven't seen any of the other Superman videos here, you'll know that... You, you won't know what this is. The Jimmy Olsen Minute is an unscripted segment where I have one minute to explain a really old comic of Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. You can also just skip like a couple minutes ahead and you can skip this segment because some people don't really enjoy it. This comic for today is Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen number 157, which I believe is actually a really close. It might be actually the number right, like the chronologically the one right after the previous comic. In this one, okay, I rushed here. What's so different about this man's face? The secret of the forbidden face, plus the strange second life of Jimmy Olsen, which we won't get to. But here, here you, here you go. That is, uh, here's, here's the, here's the comic. So anyway, the minute will start about now. Okay, so in this comic, Jimmy Olsen needs to take a picture of this mysterious magic man because. For whatever reason, no one can get a picture of his face. Jimmy Olsen, he's the best reporter they have, so he can obviously take a picture of this man's face. But anyway, when he's going to go take this picture, the man is shown to also be uh, a master of ESP, as he's able to stop an assassination attempt on him by a guy with a rocket launcher by making him think very spooky thoughts. So now, uh, Jimmy Olsen gets his rev uh, interview with him, and secretly takes a picture of his with his belt buckle. It his face does not show up in the picture. That's so weird. Why is this? So after saving his life, after he saves Jimmy's life from another assassin, he lets Jimmy take a picture of his face. But this camera was actually a gun, which was placed by the secret mob trying to assassinate this ESP guy. Superman saves them. He lets him take a picture of his face, but it's not there, and he doesn't get fired by his boss. I think I just barely didn't make it, but that's the story. Oh. Oh. oh, sorry, what happened? I blacked out for a moment. Um, oh, oh yeah. Selena calls a bulldozer to pick him up and the because i don't know a bulldozer i guess is the easiest way to get them back to the lair without looking at anyone because as soon as he looks at someone the love potion will trigger and he'll immediately fall in love with them why call a bulldozer no idea so anyway the bulldozer scene destroys the town and might actually be the best part of the movie for the most part it's funny the destruction is impressive enough and overall everyone gives a decent enough performance making it an actual you watchable scene, despite the effects being worse than Superman 1. And it's over like that. Dang. So now this significantly older man has fallen in love with the high school girl, I'm assuming? Selena and company are furious. They can't have him falling for th their rival. 
they must have him. But when they can't have his unconditional love, fear and bribery work just as well. So they fear and bribe him <laughs> and sprout a giant castle into the middle of the town because it looks like we have to go to third act time. This movie might be going by fast, but it's just because I cut out all the fluff and filler filling this overly long movie. Please don't watch it. It's not good. Anyway, Supergirl comes down to save her friend because I forgot to say the MacGuffin caught Lucy and Jimmy. Selena summons a wind demon or something and Supergirl is able to beat it, but not before getting injured by the demon's horrid power, the Adobe Photoshop transform tool. But she gets out of it. She spins. She spins and winds like a Beyblade, tearing her foes apart. Not literally, he just traps her in like a, a little, little like tornado thing and puts her in the phantom zone. And the movie ends. Day saved. So yeah, this movie isn't good. To be fair, I like it more than Superman 3 because the villains actually add something to the movie. But other than that, there's not much redeeming this. The movie kind of looks ugly because it's old. It, it, if it, for the time, it, I guess it looks fine. The effects are bad. The characters are bad. Everything about this movie, there's like no redeeming qualities and you have to try so hard to get a smidge of enjoyment out of it. It's hard to make this review because I was, I was struck. I was completely, completely left dumbfounded and speechless by how boring the movie was. So anyway, yes, this movie is an F tier. Still, higher than Superman 3, I would recommend it over that one, even though I wouldn't, I wouldn't really recommend it like at all anyway. Uh, yeah, so, so what's next? I, I think we're actually the Superman trilogy, right? There's only three Superman movies in the Supergirl. That means we must be on to, must be on to a good movie, right? Right? We're on to a good movie, right? Right? Society, lift your brow, lift your groan, 